So one of the first steps when it comes to your Aperture 3 workflow will be importing your photos. Once you've taken those photos on your camera and you've done that very precious photo shoot, you need to get those photos into Aperture so you can start doing the editing. And although it's one of the first steps, it's probably also one of the most important ones. So I'll just start by importing some photos and I'll just talk you through it as I go along. So we'll just click import. Now you'll have connected your camera to your Mac or you'll, you, you can insert the memory card into your Mac if your Mac has a memory card slot and you'll be able to see the photos on the memory card. But in my case, I'm just going to import photos off my desktop just to show you. So once you've got all your photos and you see them, on the right hand side, we have all the information we can edit on import. So I'm just gonna switch some of them off to how I think yours will probably look. Your import window probably looks something like that. So I'll just talk you from the top down. First of all, your destination is most likely going to be a new project. Unless you have an existing project and you're adding to it, you're going to say new project. Now the project name is so important. I think I mentioned this before in the previous uh, tutorial. But really, you, when, you, when your project library starts growing, you want to have projects that are very easy to find and to identify. And you want to be able to sort through them well. So I definitely recommend having a good system for naming. And I'm just suggesting one way of doing it. You might have a better way. But I like to do it according to year. And then I put a dash and then I put the month. So let's say October. And then I put a space. And then I titled it with a name that links to the photo shoot. So let's say it was a landscape trip. So I was going and taking photos of landscapes. So I'll say landscape trip. Now that's not the most descriptive, but if it was a real photo shoot, you'd have a descriptive name to go along with it. And this is important. I really want to emphasize that when you import, when you click import, it's going to create a new project according to that name. Now imagine you just keep leaving it untitled and then the next one's labeled untitled one and then untitled two and it just keeps going like that. It's fine if you have three or four of them. It might not look pretty, but you can still work with it. But when you get to like 50 or 60 photo shoots, there's no way you want to just be just manually navigating through these things until the find, you find the photos you want. Do it right the first time. Do it right when you import it. It's the quickest way to do it for you in terms of time. You, it's the least amount of time required. And it sorts it for you automatically. So definitely go ahead and fill this in. As I've explained before, we definitely want to be storing files in the Aperture Library unless you know what you're doing, unless you know for a fact you like to have it done a certain way. If you don't know, leave it as it is here in the Aperture Library. And then another option we have is a backup location and this is really handy. If you have an external hard drive connected that you use for backups or even another folder on your Mac, it's not great for backups in terms of if your hard drive fails because if your hard drive fails you'll lose both folders but it's great in the fact that you might be editing your photo and perhaps you delete the wrong photo or a batch of photos you'll have at least got the master files backed up to another folder on your computer so you can choose a location on your Mac or on an external hard drive and when you import the photos it'll automatically duplicate those raw images to the backup location. So I'm going to choose a, a new backup folder. So I'll just go to my pictures folder and I'll just say backups. And in fact, I'm just going to delete this folder. Let's just quickly delete it. Okay, so I have a backups folder that's empty in my pictures folder. Uh, most likely you'll have one on your external hard drive and I'll just say open. And then you can choose a subfolder and this is logical. You don't want photos from, well, from the last five years all within one folder. You want to have them separated. And I typically, to make it easy, I just say project name. And if you're naming your project by year and then month and then project, it'll also sort the folders in your backup folder accordingly, which is nice. So that's a great feature. I just highly recommend doing that. You, you want those backups. 
And then we have other options that available to us on import. And again, this is really important. We have metadata presets that we can add. So for example, basic info, you can edit your metadata and you can then put in information as you see, I've already done it. Apple Champ is the creator. The job title is a freelance photographer. Uh, I've put my website information in. So on import, you can assign all that information to your photos. And if you're a professional, you definitely want your name and your contact information available on your photos so that if someone gets their hands on it, it could, could bring you business. And it also obviously has copyright information and it, it proves that you were the owner of that photo. So you want to be adding this information on import. You want it done immediately. So you can do that. And you can also rename files, which I like to do. So what I like to do is I like to go for a custom name with counter. There's a variety of options. You can just play with them and find the one that suits you. But I choose custom name with counter. And then I, again, I title it according to the project. And then I also rename my master files. So basically what will happen is it will rename the photos that, that you see. So in your case, you probably have the titles that the camera assigned the photos when it took the photo. It will rename those photos according to this title. And it will add a counter on the end, 001, 002, etc. And it will also rename the master files. So we now have a new project. All the information is done. We've told the Aperture what we want the names of the files to be. We've added the metadata information. And then lastly, we have a backup location. So I'm going to say import checked. And four items were successfully imported. And we see our project, which has been labeled correctly. We see the title of our folders, which have been labeled correctly. Excuse me, the title of the photos, which has been labeled correctly. And if I navigate to my pictures folder under backups, you see it's created a new folder according to the project name. And it's renamed the master files according to the name that I gave it. And it's all done automatically on import. And it's nice and tidy and for the next 10 years, I can do this with very little effort and I will always have a really well organized and well structured um, library and backup folder. So remember to add as much information as you can on import. Now I'm not sure what kind of Macs you are working on when it comes to editing. But if you're working on a laptop, especially if it's like a MacBook Air, which you purchased for the flexibility and the, the portability, you won't have as much power when it comes to editing, working with photos. And so I'd just like to take a little bit of time to show you ways to conserve resources when working with Aperture 3. I found with my 27 inch iMac came stand with four gigs of RAM, but four gigs of RAM really didn't quite cut it. I upgraded to 12 gigs of RAM and it made a world of difference. It literally was like a completely different computer. But with laptops, especially the smaller ones, you don't always have that flexibility. It's not that easy to just upgrade your RAM. And so you might want to look for ways to just conserve resources with your laptop just temporarily while you're traveling. And so that when you get back home and you, you switch to your primary workstation, you have more resources to work with. And so I just want to show you some ways of doing that. And firstly, definitely probably one of the biggest hogs of resources, especially on importing photos is faces. And faces is a great utility when it comes to face detection, sorting your photos by the different people that you've taken photos of. But it requires CPU and RAM to, to actually scan those photos and to identify the different faces. And so when you're on the road, or if you just have a laptop, and that's the only thing that you work with, you might not find that faces is something you like to use. And so to switch it off, we can just come up to Aperture and go to Preferences. And then under General, all we have to do is uncheck the checkbox next to Enable Faces. I'm going to do that. And you'll see immediately Faces disappears from your inspector. So we can close that. And now when you import photos, Aperture will not attempt to scan those photos to identify the different faces. So that's one way to conserve resources. 
Another way to conserve resources, at least when moving through your photos, if you have a lot of raw images, and especially if you have, if you have a camera that takes very high pixels, every time you open an image, your computer or well, aperture is going to load that raw image so that you can begin editing. But raw images have a lot of information. And so when you're trying to browse using your keyboard, as I'm doing now, just to navigate through your photos so that you can just look for photos, you don't want Aperture to have to load that large raw image every time. And so a nice little function that we have is this quick preview mode, which you can either click on down here on, the, on Aperture or you can press P on the keyboard to enable it or disable it. Now when quick preview mode is enabled, it will prevent Aperture from loading the raw image. Aperture will only show you the preview image, the JPEG preview that it generates. It will not load the raw image into your RAM. And that is very handy when just navigating through your different photos. So that's just something to remember. You might just want to tap P on the keyboard, enable it, navigate through until you find the photo you're looking for, and then you find it, and now you want to start editing. You can just tap P, and it'll load the raw image, and you can start working with your photo. And just again, something to note, when quick preview mode is enabled, your adjustments tab will be disabled. You see it says quick preview on, adjustments disabled. So if you ever come across that accidentally, just know that it's your quick preview mode in Aperture. You can just tap P on the keyboard and it'll disable it and you can continue editing. But that does conserve resources when you're navigating between your photos. And then something that a lot of people don't always understand, uh, a lot of people don't even realize that Aperture does this, is it's called previews. And basically what Aperture does is it generates a JPEG preview of your raw images that it uses for a variety of reasons. Now, some examples of what it, it uses the, the JPEG previews for is it's the, it's the image that Aperture shares with other applications such as Keynote. So if you're creating a Keynote presentation and you access the inspector in Keynote and you're browsing your Aperture library, you're actually browsing the previews that, that Aperture creates. You're not browsing your raw images and you're actually using those previews in the Keynote presentation or whatever application you're using. Also, if you sync your iPhone or iPad to your Aperture library, it doesn't sync the raw images, it syncs your JPEG previews. So the previews do, do have a lot of functions, but Aperture has to use system resources to generate these previews. It's creating a, a JPEG file for every raw image that you have. Now, I wouldn't necessarily suggest that you switch off previews indefinitely because of the functions it has, but you might wanna be able to switch it off temporarily until you're done editing and then enable it again so it can continue working. Or if you are using just a laptop and you're on the road and you're not using it permanently, it's just a temporary solution, you may want to switch off previews indefinitely. So to do that, we can come up to our Aperture menu and go to Preferences. And we have a tab for Previews. And here you see it gives a small description. Aperture creates JPEG previews of your photos. Previews allow you to view photos when the master file is offline and easily use your photos in other applications, as I explained with Keynote. So, and it also explains that you can use the previews when your master images are offline. So if you're using an external drive to store your masters, you can still work with your preview images. So if you do not want Aperture to generate previews automatically, you can take off the checkbox for new projects automatically generate previews. If it's on, when you import a new project, it'll automatically start generating these JPEG files. If you take it off, new projects won't do it until you tell them to. And this is something that I do recommend, especially for people with less power at, at hand, so if they're working with laptops and such. You don't want to be importing photos and straight off the bat be generating these JPEG previews you can always do them at a later stage. So this is something you might want to consider taking off just to free up a little bit of resources. You can also choose 
what size preview to generate. So the smaller the size, it means it'll take up less file space on your hard drive. It also means it'll, it'll be easier to load. So the smaller the file size, the quicker it is for your computer to load. So depending on your screen, if I'm working with a 27 inch iMac, I might want the highest resolution I can get because of the, the high resolution screen. But if you're working with an 11 inch MacBook Air, you don't need more than 1280 by 1280. So you can choose the resolution that best suits your needs and it'll also hopefully conserve a little bit of resources. And then of course you have your photo quality. You have full quality, you have very low quality for compression. I leave it on six medium. And again, that influences the, the resources that it takes to create the JPEGs. So that's how to specify if previews are made on import. But what about the, the projects that you already have imported? Well, the projects you have imported, you can select and you have this little settings bar in the inspector. And if you, if you click on that, you'll see that the last option you have available is maintain previews for project. Now, if that's checked, it means that it'll continuously update the previews. As I make changes to my photos, it'll update those JPEG previews. Again, it means that it's gonna be constantly updating these files while you're working and while you're editing. And I mean, it's small differences. It's gonna use very small amount of resources, but it still uses resources. And if you're struggling with slowdown, this is something that might help. So when I'm typically, when I'm editing a project, busy working with the files, I'm not done with the completed project, I take off maintain previews for project. Once I'm done editing all my photos and I'm happy, I just switch it on and I let Aperture update those JPEG previews and then I can use them within my other applications and I can also sync them with my iPhone and iPad, etc. So those, that's previews. That's just something that you might want to also just look at in terms of conserving resources. If you don't have a problem with resources, then previews is definitely something you want to have on because it does add a lot of functionality. And then just one brief thing I want to mention while we're on the topic of improving the performance of Aperture. I found that when working with Mac OS X Lion, Lion uses a fair amount of RAM on its own. Uh, and so if you're working with only four gigs of RAM, you're probably looking at two gigs of RAM alone that has been used up by Lion, which means you only have another two gigs left for Aperture. And I found that Aperture being a 64-bit application can use a lot more than two gigs. It can use a lot more than four gigs, which is what a lot of people have in total. So I definitely recommend if you are a professional or someone who's really getting into, app, um, into photography seriously, you definitely want to look at getting a minimum of 8 gigs of RAM. That's just something I want to mention. There are good apps on the App Store. If I just open the App Store quickly, I'll just show you some good apps for monitoring your RAM. In fact, I've purchased one, let's see, Memory Freer. So while that loads, I'm just gonna go to the App Store and I'll just look for it. So there you go, Memory Freer. And as you can see, it's got pretty good uh, ratings. Everyone's pretty happy with it. And basically what it does, as you can see, it places a little pie chart in your menu bar and it shows you the status of your, your RAM. I have 7.17 7 gigs free. I'm using, I'm using 4.9 gigs. So as you can see, if I only had four gigs of RAM, my computer would be really slow. It's already, I think it's only 99 cents for this application, but it can give you a good indication of whether or not it's time to upgrade your RAM. So maybe you wanna have a look at that. Just check, check your RAM, check what's being used up. And then, you may decide that it's time to purchase some additional RAM.